So this is another update of all the anxiety and everything I'm going through. I still have yet to make a special video for Patreon, for my Patreon uh, supporters. I'm going to try to remember to leave a link below the video if you can please... Um, if you can't support me on Patreon, or if you can give me a donation, um, I'm seriously considering setting up a GoFundMe. I probably don't, don't have to right now, but I may have to, um, soon. But even if I wanted to set it up now... I have so much going on. I may lose my home. Which is not my home. It's actually my dad's home. But I pay rent to him. But he may lose it. And if he loses it, well, then I'm, not, I'm on the street. You know, I've said it in another video things are happening. It's not just these taxes going up on this house that are going to eat me up alive later on. And uh, my dad also doesn't want to pay the taxes anymore. He said it's my responsibility, which is fine. But in that regard, I'll probably lose a lot of my benefits. But the, one of the worst things is, is I can't talk about it. I, I, I want to tell you, but it's a legal matter. And that legal matter is so serious that we may lose this house. Or my dad, whatever. I cannot believe I've Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. This is how many days? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine days. I can't hardly eat at all. I take medicine that upsets my stomach, so I have to force myself to eat just to take my meds. Other than that, I don't eat. I mean, on a positive note, I guess I'll lose some weight. I just, right now, someone could give me a billion dollars right now and it wouldn't do, it wouldn't phase me. A billion dollars. It wouldn't phase me. Maybe eventually it would phase me and I would say, well, you know, I don't know, maybe it would help. I will say one thing. Money is awesome, but when you're sick and when you're having anxiety that does not go away. My friend offered me some Xanax the other day, and I told him, I can't take it. My primary doctor offered me some medicine to calm me down. I told her, I can't take it because I'm under pain contract. And the pain, the pain contract doctor says, if you're with us, you sign a contract to get pain pills. And uh, benzodiazepines like Ativan, Xanax, Klonopin, Clozapan, uh, Ativan, they're all a case of drugs that help with anxiety. I'm having horrid, horrid anxiety. Horrid. I would have to break contract with him. So I'm trying to get off my pain meds. That in and of itself is having major withdrawal symptoms. I've been on pain pills for at least 12 years. Actually longer than that. It's more like, because I was on the 16 years, 16 years, 16 years. Yeah, 16 years. And then I told you in my last video that doctor put me on Haldol, which I'm not taking that shit. 
even if it may help my anxiety, that shit's for schizophrenia. It's a, it's an old, dangerous drug they don't even probably use it anymore. Um, I'm supposed to get my ketamine treatment that I told you about, where they put it up the nose for my depression. I finally got a ride through my insurance because I can't drive home. They need a, I need to prove to them, so I, I need to have my, and I have no friends around here that's willing to do that twice a week because everybody works, which is understandable. And so I finally got a ride, but the thing is my blood pressure has been high for probably a good two years. Like every time I go to my doctor, it's like, you know, so your blood pressure is elevated. I just went to the eye doctor and uh, she said, sir, do you have a high blood pressure? I was like, why? This is after the exam and you know how you have an x-ray machine and you can see the, they'll show you. Well, this looked like that with the, like the, the thing and they put it up against it, lights it up, a plastic sheet or whatever, but it's in color. She's showing that my eyes have been bleeding she said that is due to high blood pressure. So the ketamine treatment, <clears throat> my primary doctor never put me on blood pressure medicine. She said, because once you're on it, you'll hardly ever get off of it. My boyfriend, he said the same thing. Well, the ketamine treatment, it has to be under 130. My blood pressure is always 135, 150. I've actually went to the hospital one time because my blood pressure was so high that I was having issues. My boyfriend took me to, it was an emergency room. And I just felt like everything was getting dark. Kind of like, like I was shutting down. Like, you know, like, um, like when you charge like a robot dog, for example, and it just starts going slow. It starts shutting down. Like I wasn't, I was slow in movement. But like my vision, everything, everything just started getting dark. Like I was just like shutting down. And when we got to the emergency room, like my blood pressure was like off the charts. He had asked the nurse. They had, they had to redo. They thought the machine was busted. They had to put me under the machine and redo it. And he didn't say nothing because he didn't want to scare me. Why they didn't give me medicine, I don't know. They just uh, uh, watched me. And it finally came down enough to where he told us the truth. He was like, your blood pressure was something that didn't make any sense. In other words, like, no one has blood pressure that high. And I'm like, why didn't you give me something? You know, that didn't make any sense. My boyfriend's in the medical field. He thought that was bullshit. He was like, the whole time we're in the room, he's like, they need to give you something. <clears throat> so, um, make a long story short. My primary doctor finally sent over and I'm about ready to go if I can. I don't know if I can, so I might ask them to deliver my medicine. Well, it would probably be for the best. Blood pressure medicine because not only do I have my blood pressure, the ketamine treatment that is supposed to be started next week on Thursday. We can't get it on Monday. It's too late. After Thursday, I'll go Mondays and Thursdays or Tuesdays and Thursdays. I don't know. My mind is so, it's like, I locked my keys again. Again, I just told you I locked my keys. I just did that again, just recently. I had a spare to get into the house. Yeah, I'm forgetting things. Um, I'm under. So much stress. Hopefully, that blood pressure medicine will get it down. Hopefully, these ketamine treatments will give me some happiness. They're not long-term. They just make you feel good for a few days. That's why I have to keep getting them. But just to get me over this hurdle. They're not going to do shit for my anxiety. And on top of that, my boyfriend's still gone. He didn't know when he gets back. And he wants to be a traveling therapist. He doesn't want to stay here with me. So, I've lost, look what I've lost. I lost my first home. Okay? Because I got sick. Then I moved back home. My dad sold the family home that I moved back into. And moved me, him, and mom to another home.
So now I'm losing two homes. Because that home would have been mine. My sister has her own. I wish she would have rented that house out. Or just give it to me and let me live in it. And then when we moved to that new home, me and my mom both flipped the fuck out. I got put back in the mental hospital. My mother got put in the hospital. She flipped out bad. And I worked my ass off for Habitat for Humanity. Dusted myself off to try my own place again. And then while we were raining on that, My dad got tired of waiting and he said, you either move into this house, the one I live in, or go find an apartment. Because he bought this house like cheap, like HUD repo, like $60,000 or something like that. And I was like, why don't you just let me stay with you and mom? I mean, I thought that's why y'all bought this big house for all of us. He's like, no. Nope. So my dad was a drill sergeant. He calls the shots. And as soon as I moved in here, panic attacks again. I've been living here for nine years. I would say the first... Out of the nine years, I, I can honestly say the past five. Out of nine years... Let's see here. In the past five years, I've kind of got used to it. Um... But before that, it was years living in anxiety. And my stomach, you have no idea. Like, it is twisting and turning. Like, I wake up sweating. I don't sleep. I wake up just sweating in pure panic. What's going on? For, like I said, today's Saturday. It started last Friday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, nine days. I, I'm taking tons of fiber because if I don't, when I poop, it's just water. And it just looks like a snake skin because my colon is spasming. And it knots and the, the lining is just shedding. I know because I've been told this by doctors before when this acts up. All I want right now is for some, I know it's going to sound whatever, but I don't care. I don't care. All I can do is tell people the truth. I just want God or big, big, husky, masculine man, fully dressed. Big hands, big arms. Just wrap his arms around me. Put one of his hands here, the other one in my back. Like right behind each other. And let me cry and cry and cry and cry. Literally pull out the pain, the insecurity, all the abuse I've had. Emotional and verbal abuse from my family. And then fall asleep. And never wake back up. That's what I truly want. I would take that over a billion dollars any day. But I'm not suicidal. I'm not commit suicide. So... Because, you know, what if there is a hell? If I die in my sleep, that's not my fault, right? And even if I lied and said it was suicidal, which I'm not suicidal, uh, what is the mental hospital going to do for me? Well, they would probably put me on some an um, anti-anxiety medicine. That would help me. But there's so much shit I got to do. You know, that <laughs> maybe 
maybe this blood pressure medicine might make me feel sleepy. Ambien is a good medicine that helped me tremendously to sleep. Can't get down with that either. My pain doctor sees it as a benzo, even though it's not. I've always felt accursed. Always. Since I was a kid, from what I've been told. I wish someone could, you know what, well, you know what would really be great? If someone could sit down with me and I could remember all the stories and go back. Because, you know, you just go back, oh yeah, I also forgot this happened and continue to, you know, to get it all written in chronological order. And the truth, me not over-exaggerating or anything, and write a fucking autobiography. The horrible things, the bad, the weird things, the strange things. It's not a coincidence I'm living in a house and right across the street is that Habitat house that I lost. That's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence that my first house that I lost was right next to a homeless shelter. I've always been worried about being homeless. Mm -mm. These are not coincidences. I think the law of attraction is working, but sadly, the curse that I'm under, you know, because I don't think the law of attraction is a, it's neither sided, good or bad. It, it's just like energy, you know, it's like a knife. A knife doesn't care if you, you know, cut a branch down or cut someone you know what I'm saying it's a tool and I think the law of attraction is just well it is but you mix that with which I truly believe I've been cursed I even saw a, a therapist one time and she said to me I you know I think there is a curse on your life I've said it a million times you know, people want to be happy. Oh, I want to be happy. I don't want to be happy. I just want my anxiety to go away. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would be... I have OCD. I have anxiety. And I have depression. I don't want to be happy. If you want to make me happy, that's fine. I don't, I don't mind keeping my depression. I don't mind keeping my OCD. It's the anxiety that has made me lose three homes. It's my anxiety. I tried to join the Air Force. Couldn't do it. Tried to be a prison guard. That's a whole other story. Couldn't do it. Tried to go to college. Couldn't do it. Barely could go to school. Um, when I went, f when I worked for uh, the, the the phone company, they were going to send us to the Mall of America in Minnesota. Like right across the street was the training. Couldn't do it. I had to train here in this hick town. And when the girls came back from there, like, oh, you should have went. You should have went. I've had come home early on flights, five hundred dollar emergency flight, because even though I had a round trip ticket at the place I was at, my anxiety kicked in. Like my anxiety. Is like a bully that rules my life. So yeah, getting rid of that and still having depression, I would be so grateful for. Because if I'm happy, but having anxiety and worry, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, I'm not asking for a lot. I'm just asking for my fucking anxiety to go away. You know, and it's... And I'll, and I'll, and I'm going to do another video on the law of attraction where it, it worked. I guess you could say in my favor. You know, I truly believe that. When I tell you the stories of all that happened with the law of attraction, you're going to be like, whoa, those were not coincidences. And I'm going to try 
to see if the doctor next week will allow me to record my session with the ketamine. Maybe you'll see me start to smile and just, you know, I don't know, but it wouldn't that be cool for me to record that going up my nose and seeing before and after. Um, I don't see why they would say no. I didn't think I'm going to ask. I'm just going to do it. And then to say, I didn't know. What's the worst thing you can do? To say, well, you didn't know, then turn it off. All right. So stay tuned for that. What should I name this video? That's another thing. If you say this far, uh, what should I name this video? I'm the most insecure, unstable person. I find security and stability in money and a home. A home that I know I'm not getting kicked out, kicked out of. A home that when my anxiety in the outside world gets bad, I can hurry up and rush home. I've been living in this home for nine years and it's very possible I'm going to lose it. Because of the legality issue that we're going through and if that gets squared away, I don't know how I'm going to afford these taxes on a thousand dollar disability check. And no one can say, well, you should have lived within your means. I've always lived, I've always lived below my means. Why do you think I worked for Habitat for Humanity? Because I wanted something cheap and small. I've always said I'd rather have a tiny house, something so cheap and small that I can take care of. I don't like big houses. Someone could give me a billion dollars tomorrow and I wouldn't, I would not live in a big house. I'd probably live in a tiny house. It wouldn't be like super, super tiny, but it would be a very, very, very small little house. It'd have a swimming pool. It would have a courtyard instead of a backyard and a swimming pool. But just, you know, very small. I would want a house that's like square like this. Here's the entry like that. You go into the entry and then the rooms are on the perimeter. And then inside the courtyard is a swimming pool. So like you would have the kitchen here. A dining room here. A bedroom bedrooms and then that way anytime you're in the bedroom like you're in the bedroom you can go in the pool you walk out go you're in the kitchen you go in the pool and I would have big glass doors that open so you can like but that's because I saw it it was on a, on a video in Bali um, but small like I wouldn't want it as huge no no small mm -mm. and I say pool but because in our old childhood home we had a pool and it, and it did it helped my back and just floating like it relieves a lot of stress PTSD I have a lot of PTSD oh boy I have a lot of PTSD from the rape from the molestation how I was treated in school and there's other things you know there's other things that's happened to me that I have not even told anyone yet I haven't told a doctor a therapist my boyfriend I got some deep deep and I mean deep shit some horrible shit that's been done to me that I've never told anyone and I probably never will because when I think about it there's a lot of like blackouts like and I, I'm afraid that if I talk about it I'm gonna find out all this stuff that not only did I know what happened to me but I blocked a lot of that out and I'm, I don't want to face, like, as my therapist said, on my, on my molestation alone, I block stuff out. She said, maybe it's better that we don't go too deep. She didn't even know about this other thing. I'm going to show you something real quick. I've had this in the house. I want to say, well, I got for at least nine days. I've been wanting to review it. I've 
probably be letting me swallow it. Like, maybe it's possible, but like, I just cannot. I have no appetite. It's hard to eat when your stomach is twisting and turning, you know? I'm not asking for any money, but please write some comments. Please give me some moral support. If you want to donate, that's fine. I guess I can leave something to donate. My windshield and my car is still cracked. I was supposed to get fixed that a long time ago. I'm getting 14 miles to the gallon. 14. Because I never got a... Um, with the spark plug thing. Tune up. I have a tree in the backyard that's falling over. It might hit the roof. I wear the same clothes. Like, I'm the most conservative person. I don't deserve this. I don't deserve any of this. I never deserved none of this and all the shit I've been through in the past. And these people that say, oh, anxiety. Yeah, I have anxiety. And then when I tell them, well, what is your anxiety? Oh, I'm, and then they use the word stress. Well, I'm really stressed out because blah, 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 blah. I'm like, that's not anxiety. Being stressed out from work is not anxiety. You don't know what anxiety is. You have no idea. You better be glad you think that's, that's what it is. You better be glad. Because the stress you're going through is nothing compared to anxiety with panic attacks. Waking up sweating, can't sleep, pacing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for like an hour or an hour and a half. Don't even know you're doing it. Hunched over only to go back into the bathroom and poop really nothing because you haven't been eating. And you're in sweating. Just sweat. Scared terrified shitless of what will happen and what might happen and knowing that you need to do something about it but a lot of the things you can't for nine days it's been like this And I'm not getting the treatment because my pain doctor will not allow me to take the medicine that will help me. That my primary doctor... Let me tell you, when I was seeing my pain doctor, I was on like five Ativan a day. Then they would switch it to like five or six Xanax a day. Like I was on high benzos. And it kept me at bay. And he had no problem giving me my hydrocodone. This went on for years. No problem. Never took extra. Only actually took the benzos like Ativan, Xanax, the anti-anxiety medicine when I really needed it. They would give me a month's supply. And instead of getting a refill, I'd wait six months and say, can I get a refill? And the doctor's like, that one bottle lasts you six months was only supposed to last you 30 days. I'm like, because I'm a conservative person. I'm a conservative person. What's two or three fucking Ativan or three or four or five Xanax going to do just for a couple of weeks to calm me down to let me get through this and then take me off of it? I'm not a drug seeker. It's not like I want to be on this forever. Like I said, my friend offered me a Xanax the other day. I was like, I can't take it. She goes, it would calm you down so much. I'm like, yeah, I know it would. It would give me a fucking break. But my pain doctor is going to find out. And then I'm going to fucking get in trouble. Then he's going to break up the contract. And then when my DJ disc in my neck gets worse, once you're blacklisted like that, 
No pain doctor will take you. You'd have to move to another state. They're getting so strict with the war on drugs. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Because yes, if you take a handful of hydrocodone and a handful of benzos, you probably would die. Well, hell, I could take a handful of any of the fucking pills the doctor gives me and I would die. But taking a couple of hydrocodone and a couple of benzodiazepines such as Ativan, Valium, Klonopin, Clozapam, Xanax, then it's not dangerous. I was doing it for over, over 10 years at least. My friend has cancer. They're doing the same thing to him. He's in excruciating pain, and he's, but he's on Oxycontin. He has horrible anxiety. Pain doctor said, you can take those pills if you want to, but then I won't be able to give you these pain pills, so pick one. But he told me he can get a hold, you know, away. I'm not going to get into it. But he can get a hold of some Xanax. And I told him, I was like, don't piss test high. Because as soon as that pain doctor finds out, you're, he's going to terminate your contract. And then he's going to blacklist you. And telling myself I deserve to be happy, like... I fucking hate these people. Oh, listen to peaceful music. Be positive. All this stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, I am 48 years old. You don't think I've been trying that shit? Huh? I can't wait till I get a thousand subscribers. Y'all do me a favor. Share the do whatever you can. I need because when I start when I get a thousand subscribers, I can go live. I can actually interact with you. Wouldn't that be so awesome? Wouldn't that be? I gotta let that down. My stomach is cramping. I think I gotta poop again. <laughs>